Hey, this is Tan. Hope you're doing well. Um, I thought I'd do part four of the weird experiences. <laughs> um, this one's not such a weird experience as it is a um, major coincidence, I think, um, but very weird synchronicity timing. Um, because, yeah, I just uh, I don't know how to else explain how this all just sort of lined up, but. You know, as you may know, I've been working on a, a middle grade novel for about six years in my spare time, and it's about climate change, among other things. And um, so then I need to backtrack for this other part. I've um, participated in two cultural exchange programs, one to Japan for nine days and one to Panama um, for about 11 months, I think it was. Um, and it was when I was 17, I went to Central America, Panama, and... Um, Turkey, Lokan, and I spent, you know, um, all these months living at the bottom of a volcano. The town is named after the volcano, the Volcan. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so I did year 12 going in Spanish and um, just visited this incredibly gorgeous, stunning country. Um, you know, when you're 17, there were 11 of us Australians flying in looking down at this majestic green paradise like it, it was i think you know jungle but i don't know if i still use the word jungle if it's tropical rainforest or you know la selva and it was so stunningly beautiful that you know we're all just like stunned and teenagers um on the other side of the planet going, wow what where are we? This is magnificent. Um, you know, where have we come to? It's just such an incredible place. And then, you know, I lived there in a, you know, in this teeny pueblo. And um, just enjoyed it so much. And then, you know, 23 years later, um, I'm working on this kids novel, this middle grade novel about climate change. And then I saw a social media post from my primo and my cousin said, you know, how do we tell them no? And it was like a plea to, uh, that was just desperate, like no means no. But at the same time, it was like fierce kind of like, we have to say something, we have to stand up. And I looked into it, what's happening over in Panama? And um, it turns out that they, you know, having this huge drought and, Panama Canal, um, you know, the huge lake um, is drying up and, you know, less boats going through and there's all this environmental degradation from mining and one of the mines, um, which was operating for 20 years illegally, um, was wanting to do another 20-year contract and the people didn't want it. But the government were like, oh, yeah, sure you know so the people were trying to tell the government and the mining company no <laughs> and a lot of indigenous peoples you know and thousands of, you know maybe even a million people one day i think i saw reports of um came out in numbers of people just came out and created these blockades in the streets cut off the pan american highway the place is shut down for a good four to five weeks, um, you know, over a month. And with people saying no more, you know, like if you do this, you know, it was just incredible. Um, they um, took it to the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court ruled in the people's favor. And um, yeah, it, the mine had to stop. <laughs> so people power, <laughs> amazing. Um, and so yeah, I felt like I was writing about a kids novel. I thought, oh my goodness, I have to mention this. <laughs> How could I not? Like this is so incredible that um, I had this experience of this gorgeous country. You know, when I was seventeen, turned eighteen there, and then all these years later, coincidentally, I'm writing about climate change, and then this environmental protests. You know, happened. And it just seemed like, I don't know, weird timing, but it, it was perfect. And yeah, so um, I might put some pictures on of Panama.
on um, here as well to show you where I lived in. Yeah, um, was the view from our house it was so beautiful, and yeah, the tropical rainforest.